again, Reed, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity and, and thank everybody for um, being here. I promise you, I promise you, it'll be worth your time. And um, I have fun doing this, and, and to me, this is all about fun. And so having said that, to me, there's nothing more fun than math, right? And everybody's like, oh, yay, math, that's fun, yeah, right, no. Now, a couple things. My, my daughter, um, she has a degree in mathematics and applied mathematics. She's a mathematician. She works at a hedge fund. And so I, I had her look over this presentation, and, and, and she said, Dad, you're not using math to generate fantastic short-term trading profits. You're using arithmetic. So don't let the term math scare you. This is fairly easy stuff, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and the dreaded division. Um, I'm going to tell you, I do most of this math in my head, and I'm, I'm not that smart a guy. Uh, I, I fake it. But uh, I think everybody should be able to do pretty well here. So again, trading weekly options using math to generate fantastic short-term trading profits. Now, I'm going to ask, I'm going to present to you that these profits I show you are fantastic, and I'm going to present that they are short-term, but I will let you be the judge. Right? And the bottom line, what we're trying to do is make money, and we make money by buying low, selling high. Right? Now, if... if if we were behind schedule and Reed said, hey, you only got two minutes, make a point. This is the point I'd make is, hey, everybody, thank you. Make money, buy low, sell high. But um, having said that, before I get into all the details on how to buy low and sell high, I have to throw out a disclaimer. Now, this is probably a minimal disclaimer because, trust me, lawyers can write very, very long disclaimers. Right? So all securities used in this presentation are for educational purposes and are not to be construed as a recommendation to buy, sell, trade any of these securities. Understand, I will not be looking at stock XYZ, right? I will not be looking at stock ABC. I will be looking at real stocks. And, and as such, don't run out and trade them Monday morning just because you heard about them for the first time here today with me. All right. Now, speaking of stocks, I hate stocks. Right? And, you're, and everybody's excited. Oh, our, our stock presenter hates stocks. This is going to be good. I, I hate stocks because they're one-dimensional. It's price. Buy low, sell high. And, and we buy and sell options the same way. We buy low, sell high, but options are multi-dimensional. And we're going to focus on a couple aspects of, of options that make fantastic short-term uh, gains. Now, the reasons to trade options as opposed to trading stocks, how much do you use? Options use a fraction as much money as you do using stocks. But more so than how much you use, it's the internal risk control aspects of an option. right? Unlike a futures contract or a stock on margin, which are ways to gain leverage, where you can lose more than you put up, you can never lose more than you put up with an option. And on top of that, we try and buy options for pennies so we can only lose pennies. And again, you don't need a big, huge account to trade my system. Having said that, if you have a big, huge account, you can put a lot of money in, in very safe, slow, secure things and, and get a fair amount of action and profit with what I do. Now, historically, in the past, options were a leveraged directional play, right? Historically, in the past, you had to know uh, charts. You had to be able to know technical analysis to pick that a stock was going up to trade options. That's not the case anymore. Everybody, if you know how to read a chart, you have a distinct advantage. But if you've never seen a chart, I can teach you how to make a bunch of money. Right? We're going to do it using options. And so first, I need to give a little primer on options. I need to give a little bit of background in case somebody doesn't know anything about options. Right, And for those option traders wanting meat and potatoes, you're going to say, yeah, duh, yeah, duh, yeah, duh. i got to give you some yeah, duhs, right? because not everybody's at your level, and I try and teach to the lowest common denominator. I try and teach. So there are two types of options. There's a call option and a put option. A call option gives the buyer of that option the right to buy a stock at a set price for a set period of time without the obligation. That set price is known as the strike price. That set period of time is expiration. Now, a couple things. 
I only buy options. I don't sell options. I don't do credit spreads. I don't do naked puts. I am simply buying options. I am buying undervalued options, and I sell them, and I make a ton of money. So a call option gives us the right to buy a stock, again, without the obligation. That's why we never risk more than we pay. A call option, in a sense, you can say is a bet a stock is going up in price. The other type of option is a put option. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell a stock at a set price, the strike price, for a set period of time, the expiration, without the obligation. Now, I might buy a put option on a stock I own kind of as an insurance policy on that stock, but as a general rule, we're going to be looking at straight options trades. We're going to be looking at a put option as a bet that the stock is going down in price. Now, I don't think this is gambling. I don't necessarily like the word bet, but it kind of fit there, right? And it size-wise on my screen fairly well. I, I am not a gambler. I am a mathematician, right? And I take, I take advantage of statistical edges as we find them. And the way to do that is to reject quickly, right? Understand there's probably 10 or 12,000 stocks out there, 10 or 12,000 stocks, and I don't need to trade them all, right? It's not my life list, my bucket list to trade every stock out there, right? My goal is to make money. That should be your goal, make money. And so I simply take the 10 or 12,000 stocks. If it does not have an option, I just get rid of it. So now, I, now I'm focusing on about 3,000 stocks. I've whittled the list down, right? I've gotten rid of three, three quarters of them. Well, guess what? I want to get rid of another 90% of what's left. To me, if a stock does not have a weekly option, I get rid of it. All right now, I'm down about three or 400 stocks. I whittle that list down further. Now, I whittle that list further by putting my pulse system mathematics on it. Now, pulse is an acrostic. An acrostic is an acronym on steroids. It spells something. I do this as a memory tool, right? And if, you're, if there's any pilots out there, you know a lot of pilots have checklists, and sometimes a checklist, you know, the, the first letter of each action is such that you can remember to do it in order, right? That, that, that helps you, right? My goal is to teach you how to do this. My goal is to teach you how to do this without me. Now, mind you, I'll do all the heavy lifting for you, but... I do not do this as a black box, right? I don't hide. I, I show everything. Anyway, Pulse, again, is an acrostic memory tool. That's an acronym on steroid. It spells something. P is for profit potential. U is upside reward. L is low risk. S is setups and strategies. And E are events, entries, and exits, right? Not only buy low, sell high. Buy is the entry, exits the sell, right? We do this. This system, I'm going to get more into the system, but I also want to tell you that the Pulse system, I have written a book. Right? I, I'm a writer. I've written hundreds of articles. I've written travel articles. I've written, um, oh, I wrote a logic puzzle. I sold the Dell crosswords when I was 14 years old, right? I consider myself a writer. I also uh, create videos, right? I took filmmaking in school. And, and in a sense, your presentation here is, a kind of a rough idea what my videos are like, except a couple things. One, I slow down a little bit because I'm maybe not so constrained on time. And two, I edit them, right? So I try and deliver a good product. My product is a weekly newsletter, right? In this newsletter, comes out every weekend, I have a watch list. This is the three or 400 stocks that I've done the mathematical formula on that brings it down to a manageable few dozen. Of that few dozen, I pick the top five or so setups for the week, and I write about them in great detail. And each week, I review my picks from the previous week, and all along, I educate. So I haven't published this week's newsletter yet because I'm giving this presentation, but I've written the review of last week's picks, and we, and we hit some big winners, right? And then I will write my picks for next week, and again, next week, we'll review those. Comes out every weekend. Now, the Pulse system, P, is profit potential. Here's a 
table of Amazon call options from June of last year. And the column on the left shows the opening price, right? And the column on the right shows the high price for that day. Understand, this is the same day. I, I told you this was fantastic short-term profits. I'd like you to think that buying in the morning and selling later that day is short-term, and I'd like for you to think that buying something for 20 cents and selling it for $10.95 is fantastic, right? Understand that options trade in contracts, there's 100 shares per contract, so the price you see here, the top one, opened at $8.50, it would cost you $850 to buy that. It made a high of $27.50, $2,750. Now, a couple things. Um, you look at the cheaper ones. Again, I showed you the one that went from $0.20, cents, that's $20, up to $10.95, that's $1,095. Right, $20 bill in the morning became $1,000 in the afternoon. Again, I think it's short term. I think it's fantastic. I will let you decide. Right? It's not just calls. Here, a week later on Amazon on puts, we also had some fantastic short-term returns, but they were only in the three to 500% range. Right? By the way, if you become my student, you will see that three to 500% is not, not fantastic. It's commonplace. We get them every week, week after week after week. Um, here's a couple of shots of some bigger moves. Here's a VXX call that went from eight cents to a dollar ninety in an hour and a half. A, another VXX call that um, moved from two cents at open, two dollars a contract, made a high of a dollar fifty, one hundred and fifty dollars a contract. Again, we have some big potential. Now, a couple things. It's not what I do that counts. It's what my students do that count. So let's look at some of my students' trades. Right? Let's look at some of my students' trades. This is an actual uh, trade that I wrote about in the newsletter. This is a student. Right? I'm, I'm really proud of this student, by the way, because I'll use a couple more examples of, of him uh, in the presentation. Uh, an interesting thing, side note, uh, this student went on the TV show Shark Tank and sold his business to one of the sharks. So I, as as well, I think I'm his best friend because of teaching him how to do this. I, I think he's got a bigger best friend than me. Having said that, back in January of last year, he bought the Tesla 155 call options for 60 cents, 60 dollars a contract, and he sold them for seven dollars and thirty cents. That's seven hundred thirty dollars a contract. He put twelve hundred dollars in and pulled out fourteen thousand six hundred and made thirteen thousand four hundred dollars in a day, right? And, and a couple of things, he bought 20 contracts. You don't have to buy 20. You, you could have bought 10. You could have invested $600. You could have bought five, invested $300. For that matter, you could have bought one and invested $60, right? So again, we don't have to risk a lot of money. Now, is this typical? Well, here's a more typical trade. This actually is the same student. He bought the Freeport McMoran, Right, Freeport McMoran FCX. It's a copper miner. He bought the thirty-six dollar puts on November seventh for four cents. He ended up selling for thirty-two cents, which was nine times his money. Right now, you might someone might say, "Hey, Chris, uh, this is typical, but this is old." But I, I, I bring up an old one for a couple reasons. One, we trade the same stocks over and over again. We're not bouncing around looking for the the new flavor of the month. Additionally, look at that date, November 7th, 2013. Now look at this screenshot, November 7th, 2014. One year to the day exactly the same stock. We had an option that closed at $0.06 cents one day, opened at $0.08 cents the next day, traded up to $0.36, cents, closed at $0.32. Cents, right? This is a overnight change of 433% profit in one day. Now, again, these, these are a little bit older. We're going to show some newer ones. A couple things. We hit FCX on a regular basis. That's Is it typical? We typically hit on, on FCX. Here's an email 
from a student on March 20th this year. He bought 500 FCX call options for 15 cents, sold them on Friday for 80 cents. He put $7,500 in, sold for 40,000, made 32,500 before commissions. Again, he bought 500 contracts. You could have bought 50 contracts and risked $750. You could have bought five contracts and risked $75. Again, I think it's short term because it's in a day. I think it's fantastic because it's $30,000, but I'll let you be the judge. Again, continuing with my students' trades, I want to show you what I consider typical, right? And and you might not catch it as typical right away, but I promise you, you will. It says, great call on your updates. Right? This, is, this is the newsletter. I pick these stocks. This is Chipotle Mexican Grill and FAS, which is the 3X banking bullish tracking stock. It says, at 9.35 a.m. Eastern, I bought 10 Chipotle options for $1.95. That's 195 a contract times 10 is $1,950. He paid $15.35 in commissions. He bought the puts for... $35 a contract, 10 is 350 Again, he paid $15.35 commission. It says, as the attached screenshot shows, I closed out both transactions for a one-day net gain of $6,538.44. Again, he said fantastic, not me. I think you can't argue, and I think you can't argue that one day is short term. Now, is it typical that I get emails from students making $6,500 on a trade? Well, I, I get tons of them. Here's why I think this is a typical trade. Look at it says, he says, I bought at 9.35 a.m. Eastern, right? 9.35 a.m. Eastern is five minutes after the open, right? Specifically, he sent me a screenshot of his trades, and you can see that he bought his Chipotle options five minutes after the open. One minute later, he bought his FAS options, and both of them he sold four minutes before the close. We right we look to often buy at or near the open of one day or at or near the close and we often sell at or near the open of the next day or at or near the close right again we're not necessarily looking at charts we're looking at mathematics on options that we can do at night when the market's closed and again my newsletter I do a lot of the heavy lifting for you so I say this is a typical trade, right? This is probably more typical. I want to let you know I traded Salesforce.com today. It was on your list. Again, that's my top five. If my math is correct, I realized a 500% on this trade. This was virtual trading. See attachment, make comments. I still have to watch three videos. So I, I say this is typical because a couple things. He paper traded, right? Virtual trading. My point being, if if I'm an expert and I say, hey, look, Apple is going to release the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 9 three or four years from now, you need to buy Apple today, you won't know for three or four years if, I'm an, if I was right or not. But when I tell you on one Saturday to buy an option on CRM, and next Saturday, if I'm wrong, we know about it, right? If I'm right, we know about it too. And, and trust me, I'm right far more than I'm wrong. I'm right, and, and on, more so than that, the ones I'm wrong, my losses are nothing compared to what my gains are. The point being, you can practice this without risking money. You can paper trade this, build up your comfort level, and then trade. I get emails all the time. Chris, I've been your student for three or four months. I finally made my first trade with real money, right? People practice, and you can practice, and you can get good at it. You can practice over and over again. I also think it's fairly typical that he did not watch all the videos yet, right? We can send you a bunch of videos. Anyway, P is profit potential. U is upside reward. You might think that upside reward is the same as profit potential, right? I, they probably are, but I, I need them to spell something, right? I need P-U-L-S-E. It's an acrostic. It spells out. But to me, upside reward is I don't want to do any trade unless I have the possibility of making at least 100%. That's my minimum target, 100%. So a couple things. 
I want to do this while risking only a small amount of money, generally pennies per share, right? Yesterday, I bought an Apple call option for 19 cents and I sold it for 60 cents. Ah, you know, I, I, it's a pretty good return, but it's only pennies per share, right? PUL, this is the math that determines what stocks we want to focus their options on. Now, this is, this is not a hidden secret. I, I've written an Excel spreadsheet that I give to my students that they can then go to Yahoo Finance, copy and paste data from historical prices, plug it into the spreadsheet, and it'll tell them whether the options were tra trading or not, whether options on that stock are worth trading or not. Right? PUL, now we get into the fun stuff, the S and the E. Right? Now, S stands for setups. Right, it also stands for strategies, but let's first look at setups. Now, we can have a stock-specific setup, or we can have a market-wide setup. Right, market-wide, the, the theory being a rising tide lifts all boats. Now, more, more important than the setups we choose, because I, I really don't have time to talk about the setups we choose, let me talk about some of the strategies we use. Now, we can trade directionally. We can buy a straight call, thinking the stock's going up in price. We can buy a straight put, Right, so thinking of the stock's going down in price, or we can trade non-directionally. We can buy both a call and a put because we don't care what way it goes as long as it goes one way. Now we do this in two things. We either use a straddle or a strangle. A straddle is both a call and put with the same expiration and with the same strike prices. Now here's our rule on straddle, and here's the keys to the kingdom. We only buy straddles if the stock price is equal to that strike price that the call and put, put are on, right? And because of that, we don't buy straddles often because stocks move around all the time, but they're very rarely at a strike price. Now, having said that, 10, 15, 20 years ago when I traded options, because I've, I've been doing this for 30-some-odd years, mind you, we had strike prices every $5, maybe every $2.5. Now we have strike prices on certain underlying issues every 50 cents. So we can do straddles more often, right? A straddle is a non-directional bet a stock will move. What we more often do is a strangle. This is a call and put with the same expiration with different strike prices. Now, one of our rules is that the put always has the lower strike price of the two. A strangle is a non-directional bet a stock will break out. Now, a couple of things. I'm going to take a drink of water here because I'm talking so fast. I see, I see that a number of you have asked questions. My thoughts are most of the questions you ask are typically going to be answered in a slide or two, so I, I hold off. But I promise you, at the end of the presentation, I'll go back and, and try and answer as many, if not all, this, all of the um, questions. Again, what you should know by now, there's two types of options. Calls, betting the stock goes up. Puts, betting the stocks go down. Combine the pair, betting the stock moves. Right? P-U-L-S-E. E. We can have events, stock-specific or market-wide. Right? Netflix released its earnings. That's a stock-specific event. Now, contrary to, to many people, I can mathematically prove we're better off buying our options after the earnings release than before. Right? Market-wide events, we get non-farm payroll the first Friday of each month. We get the FOMC, the Federal Reserve, meets eight times a year. Those are, those are the big examples of market-wide events. Here's a, here's a, a student. He says, I read your newsletter and decided that triple witching Friday sounded too good to be on the sidelines. I had a fantastic two months of trading that could cover a year's worth of income. So on Thursday before the close, again, near the close, that's our standard operating procedure. He said, I made our move, so here are the results. Four hours and 15 minutes, he made $66,850 in a day. Again, I think that's short term, and I think that's fantastic. I let you be the judge. E, earnings, 20 LinkedIn, uh, 267 and a half call after the stellar earnings. Again, after the earnings, not before. He bought for $1.45 and he sold at $4.55. Now, 
couple things. It says 634. I'm going to tell you this guy is in the Pacific time zone. This was four minutes after the open. Again, typically how we do it. Now, we don't necessarily have to hold to the end of the day because we bought at the open. We get out when we get a pretty good profit, and I think buying at $1.45 and selling at $4.55, basically tripling your money, is it, it's a good couple of hours, right? Again, uh, Twitter, 6.35, five minutes after the open, and he sold the same time. Uh, it paid 61 cents, sold for $1.45. So I, I've showed you that we have events. Right? We have entry. I've been showing you that we get in at specific times, and there's a mathematical reason why we get in on those times. There's also mathematical reasons to get in when the stock is at a certain price. I gave you an example, the straddle. We only buy a straddle if the stock is at or very close to a strike price. Again, it's all rules-based. It's all based on math, or as my daughter says, arithmetic, and logic. And again, I remind you, when I was 14 years old, I sold a logic puzzle to Dell Crossword. I'm fairly logical. So E is also exit. How do we get out? Now, we can, we can place a target order, or we can use a stop order, right? My Apple trade that I got in yesterday, Apple moved up, right? My call became profitable. I placed a stop loss. When Apple moved higher, I raised my stop loss. When Apple moved higher, I raised my stop loss again. When Apple moved higher still, I raised my stop loss. Apple rolled over a little bit. Boom. I tripled my money on that call option. I did leave $0.08 cents on the table. Again, the top five is my newsletter. The, we, the PUL gives us the math to pick the, the wall. Watch list, the, 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 the setups, the, the events, they make a stock, make the top five. And so literally I pick five, give or take, each week. So this is a November newsletter from a while ago. It says, if Tesla gaps up, I feel the reversal has a higher likelihood of being a better trade. If Tesla gaps down, I feel the continuation has a better chance. Both involve buying puts. And as always, you can hedge yourself by buying strangles, buying both the call and the put. Now, I think this is pretty cut and dry. I said, hey, look, if Tesla gaps, and, and we have a rule, if a stock doesn't gap, we don't trade it, right? So in this situation, if it gaps up, buy a put because it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn around, and if it gaps down, buy a put because it's going to continue. Buy the puts, and if you're not sure, if you're nervous, buy them both, right? So here's an email from a student Thursday at 9.39 a.m., right? Again, nine minutes after the open. He said he bought five contracts of the 143 put for 42 cents. He placed an order to sell at $1.50, right? And he left. He was filled two minutes later. Again, I think you cannot argue that two minutes is short term. You might argue that buying at 42 cents and selling at $1.50 is not fantastic. I might, I might disagree, but it's not my opinion that matters. It's your opinion, right? different student says, as a newer student of three or four months, I had a great week trade in your system. He says, I bought one contract. See, when you, when you paper trade and you risk nothing, when you, when you start actually trading, you can start with a minimum of one. He spent $138 and turned it into $600. Right, that goes a long way when you're a small account. Anyway, a couple points. I will show you massive, massive moves. I'm not vain enough to think that we buy the low of the day and sell the high of the day, right? I, I, don't, I don't think that. I know that we can get a lot of that middle. And, and we leave money on the table. And when we leave money on the table, we call that sloppy slop. So here's the chart of the Tesla moves right, that that one student missed. He bought his option for $0.42, cents, sold it for $1.50, two minutes later, two days later, it was at $10, right? He left money on the table. Now, again, in the Pulse system, I wrote a book, I filmed lots of videos, we have the weekly newsletter, I do the math for you, I'll teach you how to do the math so you can create your own watch list. I think part of the value is me picking the top five, right? And I think part of it is the, 
the education, a lot of that education comes from reviewing the previous week's picks. I've been doing this professionally since 1978, and and I know the market. Again, I, I think I'm a pretty good writer, and I think I'm a pretty good teacher. And my goal is to teach you how to exploit a setup. And so I'm going to talk about a stock, right, that some of you have heard before and some of you may have never heard before. It is one of my absolute favorite stocks. I go back so far in time with it that I've given the stock a nickname and, and other people have given it the same nickname. The stock is Schlumberger, right? Schlumberger. And if you read it, it, it looks like Schlumberger. But the ticker is SLB. We jokingly call it SLOB, right? S-L-O-B. And, and we hit on this thing real regularly. Here's a screenshot of Schlumberger making a 1,300% move overnight from one day's close to the next day's close, right? A couple weeks later. Now, mind you, one of the things I love about Schlumberger is it quite, quite often doesn't move a whole hell of a lot, right? We've got at least from one day to the next. So here it closed at one day at seven cents. It opened the next day at seven cents, and it traded as high as 70 cents. Now, mind you, you, if you look closely, you'll see that it sold off to 20 cents, right? That's why raising a stop loss as we go, we're not going to get all of that 70. We're going to get a lot of it. But if you bought at 70, excuse me, if you bought at 7 and you sold at 50, you still increased your account by sevenfold. All right, and if seven, if sevenfold's not good enough, how's this for a move? 2,900% overnight. So, again, it's not what I do that counts, it's my students, right? Thanks, Chris. I got in Slumbers A early this morning and got out with a $1,000 profit in 15 minutes. Again, I think that's fantastic. I think that's short term. He said, I enjoy your service very much. Too bad I'm not a day trader. Interesting enough, he says he got in this morning, he got out 15 minutes later, and he's not a day trader. So a, a, a couple of things about day trading, right? Some people say, oh, I don't have $25,000 in my account. I don't want to be considered a day trader. Well, you're allowed to make a certain number of day trades. And, and if you're really, really concerned about it, do like this next student. He bought at the close of one day at a quarter. It opened at $2.80, right? It traded up to $3.37, but the close of one day, the open of the next, that's not a day trade. That's over a 1,000% move overnight. Again, Schlumberger. Another email. I've been a student of yours for four months now. Right? There's a little bit of a learning curve, but it's not like it's going to take you years and years to understand this. Again, because the action happens so quick and we review constantly, constantly reviewing, you can learn it in a fairly short period of time. I do suggest you watch all the videos. He became a slob. He bought the 95 strike price puts right, at 14 cents and he put a sell order. Right, He set a target for four times as much at 56 cents, right? He ran out, he sold them, they traded up to 90 cents. So he left 34 cents on the table, right? He was sloppy, but he made money. Again, um, slob, we got lots of opportunities to get in. Here's the close of one day or the open of the next, right? Moved up 800%. Another email from a student. Subject, my newest best buddy. Now, two things. I don't know if I'm his newest best buddy for introducing him to Schlumberger or if Schlumberger is his newest best buddy. He, was, he wasn't quite so clear. But he didn't want to let me know that one of his students rang the bell with a nice Schlumberger game. Right? He says he felt some shivers of greed hitting him, but he felt making a double was enough to put a smile on his face heading into the weekend. Now, he said, and this is an unedited email email. When I put emails in my newsletter, I do not edit them. I don't I don't switch them around. Right? He said he bought the Slumber J 96 95 strangle. See if if I would have edited it, I would have put 95 slash 96 because we, we tend to always write them that way. The put is always the lower the strike prices. He says he bought around one o'clock yesterday, purchased the calls for fifty cents and the puts for fifty eight cents. Right? When our system works, he should have paid fifty four cents each. But but we have some play. Right. Bottom line, he bought the call for 50, the put for 58. I say he paid a dollar eight for the pair. 
he sold the call for 310 and he'll let the puts expire worthless. So understand, people ask me, what, what is your winning percentage? Well, in, in this instance, let me ask you a question. Is this winning percentage 100% because this trade worked? Or is this winning percentage on this trade 50% because the put was a total loss? We will often buy options that are total losses, right? My Apple option, my call option yesterday, that I bought for 19 cents and sold for 60 cents. It was accompanied by a put I bought at 18 cents and sold for three cents. Right? I paid 37 cents for the pair. I sold the pair at 63 cents. One of them for less than I paid for it. Right? Was that a loss? I, I'll let I'll let you do the accounting. The trade made money. Again, another email. I'd like to thank you for teaching me how to trade slob. Right, Schlumberger, I've been trading for almost two months with success. I'm up over 15,000 to date. I basically trade with strangles, and I'm amazed how consistent it works. He usually waits for the price to be between two strike prices. That's one of our rules. And he says, my question is, are there other securities that trade similar to Schlumberger, or is this the only one with this unique feature? And my answer to him is, does it matter? <laughs> and, and the real answer, there are others that trade this way, but if you can make $15,000 in two months trading one stock, and keep going back and back and back, you don't need to learn another stock. More current example from Schlumberger, March 5th of 2015 on FOMC day, option open at six cents, made a high of 72 cents, 12 times your money in one day. And that's not fast enough. Here's a Schlumberger option that moved from two cents to a dollar in, in about 15 minutes. Now I talk about short-term options, right? We tend to look to buy near the close of one day or the open of another, but sometimes we get lots of opportunities to get in. This is a chart of an Apple option from a while ago. The entry was for three and a half days. You could have got in for 50 cents and you had multiple exits above $6, albeit I could see if someone used a stop loss, they probably would have gotten taken out around $2. Shame, 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 you know, bad trade. We paid 50 cents, we sold it two bucks. We left money on the table, sloppy slop. I write about short-term trading, but I will occasionally write about a long-term option, right? They, they can have good math. So I wrote specifically on this, this time back in July to buy an Apple option that was priced, the premium was around $3. Now in the, in the newsletter I gave all the math why the three dollars was a magical number and I didn't care if you bought an option right that was one week or one month out in the future or four months or further out in the future just buy the one that was a th about three bucks right? I wrote about it and and you could have taken action right and bought these options and you could have sold them and made 30 some odd percent or you could have held them right and and made about what is that, 800% or so, or 8,000%, ah, whatever it is. I'm, I'm, that would require me to do division. I've told you I'm good at arithmetic, and maybe that's my weak spot. Anyway, the Pulse system. I wrote a book, I film videos, I write a weekly newsletter. Again, I consider myself a pretty good writer, right? and I've got a very good proofreader. So <laughs> write the newsletter. I we educate, educate, educate constantly in addition to making picks. Now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to become a student of mine, right? To, to get the books and videos. Now, to, I consider myself a good writer, and, and good writers should be good readers, right? Good writers should be good readers. I don't know if anybody has ever heard of the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. As 100 years ago, Napoleon Hill interviewed all these millionaires of the day, which would be the billionaires of today, and he found a common theme through people that make money, and that common theme was they were decisive. They could make a decision and act upon it, and in a sense, that's how trading goes. You have to make a decision and act upon it. Right? The nice thing about options is because you're risking so little, if by chance you're wrong, it's not going to break the bank. The other nice thing about options 
right? The way we trade them is that when you're right, you make a ton of money. But you have to take action. You take a calculated risk and take actions, right? So you have a chance to get my book, to get my videos, to get my newsletter, to get educated, 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 and to get a free bonus video. Now, the free bonus video is sold by a different publisher. I have five different publishers that I publish for. And one publisher got together, bought this video uh, from another publisher. And the, the, the publisher that sold the video actually wanted to deliver stuff electronically. We, we mail you a book. We mail you the videos. Right? The newsletter, we send you via email. But the reason to become my student are really the same reasons to buy options. Right? How much do you use? and how much could you lose? To be my student, it costs $97, right? $97 will get you 13 weeks of the newsletter, right? One quarter. Now, a couple of things. This is not a loss leader. We don't sell to you for 97 and then try and renew you for 197, 297, 397, or 497, right? This is not a discounted price. I do not ever discount my price and I do not ever raise my price. Having said that, if we do, in fact, raise the price later on, you would be grandfathered in if you want to continue receiving the newsletter. A couple things. I have amongst the highest, if not the highest, renewal rate of newsletter writers for my publishers and possibly in the industry. Right? And part of that is because the emperor has no clothes. If I make a pick on Saturday and I am terribly wrong by the next Saturday, I cannot hide. Right? So how much do you use $97 to become my student? How much could you lose? Nothing. You can't lose anything. I'll tell you why. Right? And so, uh, Reed, if you don't mind uh, putting this link up in the chat so, or, or, or wherever you put it so people can get it. And I promise you, I, I've, I've got a little bit of time. I'm going to answer questions. I've got just a couple more slides here. I've said, what does it take to be a trader? You have to be decisive. You have to take calculated risk. Trust me, I calculate everything. But I'm telling you, you have no risk because we have a full money-back guarantee. If I cannot show you, well, no, 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 not me show you, but how about, how about on your shoulders now for change? If you cannot double your money 20 times in 20 days, I'll give you your money back. Now, a couple things. Don't read into this what it doesn't say. It's not saying you're going to turn 100 into 200 and 200 into 400 and 400 into 800 and 8 to 16, 16 to 32, and pretty soon you got $10,240 or whatever. You know, I'm not saying you're going to compound double your money. I'm saying that you, following my math, following the picks in my newsletter, you can double your money. You can buy an option for a dime and sell it for 20 cents. You can buy an option for a dime and sell it for 50 cents. Both of those count as a double, right? You can buy an option for a quarter and sell it for 50 cents. You can buy one for a dollar and sell it for two bucks, albeit we don't generally buy options that expensive. I will show you that you can do it 20 times in 20 days if you don't do it for whatever reason, including you didn't try, I'll give you your money back, right? And therefore, you have no risk. But you do need to be decisive. You do need to take action. All right. So having said that, I'm going to answer questions until Reed kicks me off. So let me, let me scroll back to, to look at the kind of the first question. I'm going to try and answer them in order here. There are a fair amount of them. Um, all right. Can you show more recent trades in your examples? Uh, how about Apple here the other day? Uh, that counts. How about FCX? We buy FCX options that are near a dime. The 16 put yesterday opened for a dime and traded to 47 cents. Does that count? We hit FCX three out of four weeks each month. Right? We probably hit Schlumberger three out of four weeks as well, but the options on Schlumberger cost more than FCX. Right, you're apparently buying cheap out of the money options with a very high likelihood of expiring worthless. On what basis are you assuming you're going to make big moves? Uh, we do tend to buy out of the money options. We're doing so because of the 
the option Greek known as gamma. Most people trade options based on delta. We trade them on gamma. I honestly, God, John, don't have the time to answer you here, but I promise you it's in my books, it's in my videos, and if you can take a calculated risk to take and read that and watch that, knowing that if in 20 days it doesn't work for you, send it back, we'll give you all your money back, your answer will be far better than the answer I can give you here. Um, we tend to trade options on stocks. Somebody asked if we trade them on futures. I, I basically, I trade options on uh, stocks and ETFs. Uh, Chris, I've not traded options. How to open and close them? Can I do this? Absolutely, you can do this. I have grandmothers. I get, I get emails. I, I'm a 67-year-old grandmother, never traded options in my life. My husband just died, and I need to do something because we don't have enough money. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so if, if, I get a, if I get an old lady, I know I'm not trying to def defame old ladies or anything, but if I get a person that's never done this ever before, uh, I can teach an old dog new tricks. Can you show some loss examples? Hey, I, I, I lose 100% on, on well, my put yesterday on Apple, I, I lost 80%. I, I will lose 100% sometimes, but since our winners can be 2, 3, 4, 500% or 2, 3, 4, 5,000%, in, in the long run, we make money. Can this strategy be uh, uh, applied to accounts lower than 25,000? Absolutely. Um, interesting enough, that, that rule is for margin accounts. If you read the rules, and you can't buy options on margin, so if you have a small account, you just buy them in a cash account. It shouldn't be any problems. But again, keep track of how many you do. Do you use trailing stops? Um, you know, if I buy an option for a nickel, uh, what, where would I put the trailing stop? Three cents? No, I just, if, I'm, I'm willing to, to lose that all. Hey Chris, we are actually out of time. I do apologize for cutting you off. I think we got time for maybe one more question. All right, let me let me look at them here. So a lot of people are asking for examples, and they were asking, and you know, hey, your Slumber's A examples from a year ago, and I tried to pull up some more current ones, and and you know, the examples I use try and make the point, and and a couple of things, you know, Slumber's A traded it had its earnings released last week, and so we we didn't trade it because of that. But we'll trade Schlumberger against next week, right? And you know, here, here's the bottom line. I'll be real quick. There's 12,000 stocks out there. Reject most of them, right? If it doesn't have an option, reject it. Next, if it doesn't have a weekly option, reject that. Next, if its bid ask spreads are too wide, right, or the strike prices are too far apart, reject that. Now you've got just a few dozens. Now you need to find a reason to trade them. I can, in the minute you get give me left I can't teach you the reasons but I promise you in my newsletter in my books I can I can do it all again I just ask you to be decisive understand that we have a full money back guarantee if you cannot double your money 20 times in 20 days we'll just give you your money back so if if you can risk your time right you will be a student of mine for life